Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to another American Horror Story. This is Apocalypse. This is episode 10, the finale. And obviously to commemorate that it's a finale, I've got my shirt and tie on. As always, I've never missed the finale without not wearing it. Sorry that there's a background noise again. It is very hot today. I have to have my aircon on, I'm sorry. It's too, too hot. And this is long sleeve as well, so... I was going to wear my jacket that I wore in the last finale, but no way, man. I would melt. I would literally melt. But anyway, episode 10 of Apocalypse. Now, whilst I was loading the episode up to pause at the beginning and then do this intro, I saw the thumbnail. Netflix <laughs> always likes to give you a spoiler thumbnail, which is really appreciated. Well done, Netflix. Well done, you. Um, but the thumbnail is Constance The camera is like below her She's kind of looking down as if she's done something Or she's doing something, you know So thank you Netflix for that spoiler Thank you So I'm guessing there's a return to Murder House in this episode as well Because Constance can't leave the house, can she? So someone must end up there Maybe Michael? <laughs> I don't know, that's what the fucking thumbnail is making me think, man I was thinking something completely different But now I'm... Um, I'm thinking it could be a murder house thing. I don't know, man. It's uh, it's annoying. Anyway, last episode. Shall we have a little recap of last episode? Um, it was more or less the Illuminati. The co the cooperative is another name for the Illuminati. So it's like a hundred of the most wealthiest people or bosses. Um, they've agreed to run kind of like a new world. And they've sold their soul to the devil, so Michael is technically their boss now, because he's the son. And the episode ended on Michael saying, turn to page 6, section 1, building the outposts, which we already know about. We know there's outposts already, so it was, wasn't really news to me. But finally, are we finally going to have the present moment? I've been waiting so long to see the present, man. Ever since it cut off in like episode 4 How have we had 5 straight episodes of flashbacks? Jesus Christ Okay, without further delay This is the finale It is called Apocalypse Then How did you get past security without an appointment? I did something like this Purple is for royalty, dear Not middle management Okay that was easy. She can rob a bank if she wanted to, really. It's the same Pierre Vanderbilt. We'll try to purchase four tickets for himself and his family. We'll accept his offer and secure him a place at Outpost 3. Planning the end of the world over a box of hot wings. Hey, hey, leave the wings out of it. Wings are the best. Okay, so Myrtle Snow's the one that made sure Coco, Mallory, Oh, the, the the character that Evan Peters played were, on, were there, even though Evan Peters isn't a witch. But he was with them. He was with Mallory and Coco at the beginning, so... And it was for four, so I'm guessing Coco's husband, boyfriend, should have been there too, but he missed the flight. You'll forget that you're witches. Okay. You'll forget everything you ever knew about yourselves. This spell will give you new identities, new personalities. Your job will be to demean Mallory. We've modeled your new personality after Madison. No. No, there must be another way. Consider it an upgrade. Heh. <laughs> of course. That makes sense, though. After you cast the spell, will we remember you? Not until the spell is broken. And by then, we all might be piles of ash. So this is goodbye. So where did Cordelia and Myrtle and Madison go then, to avoid the apocalypse? Before they turned up at Outpost 3? And spell or no spell, I'd never let anything bad happen to you. If the world's gonna end, at least we'll be together. That's cute, man. Quite cute. It makes sense though, man, completely. I've got no problems with that. Under a spell and that, because they were... Mallory was her fucking servant and stuff. Memoria unda tempores est. Oh, 
Where am I? I need a vanilla latte. Mallory, go get me one. Oh, that was a deal with Michael. But I'm sorry, Coco. I'm just not going to be able to work my magic with this little church mouse hovering over your shoulder. Mm, that's my assistant, Mallory. Who should be out getting me my hazelnut macchiato at exactly 120 degrees. Jesus Christ. There we go. I called it. I knew it was a bloody latte or something. You shouldn't even be here. Excuse me? It's a complete waste of time. No offense to your stylist, but you can't improve on perfection. <laughs> How quickly did they fall in love? No, thank you, Myrtle. I'm not hungry. I want permission to burn a witch. Jesus. Our identity spell is more powerful than anything that voodoo queen could penetrate. I want her safe and sound. Until we are ready to make her pay. Yes, there we go. In the present. Let's go. Any present now? The present now. Sometimes I feel like there's someone buried inside me. Not quite the present, but it's closer to the present, this. Let me go. Don't be afraid, Mallory. I'm offering you a chance to live. I said, let me go! Let's go, man. Let's go. Jeez, fuck. This is what I've wanted to see the whole fucking series, man. Apocalypse. All I think... When I think of apocalypse, I think zombies. Oh. It's not zombies, then. It's just a coven. Fuck. I want to see zombies and stuff, though. How long have we been buried down there? properties of Louisiana swamp mobs here. <laughs> that explains a lot, okay. I believe it. They were underground for that long. No food, no water. La, 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 la. Yes, we're in the present, finally. <laughs> I've been wanting to see this for so long. Nice little beat to it. La, 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 la. Find our girls. Find our, sisters. our sisters, that's the one. And we need you. We need all of you. You're on your own with that shit. I'm not here to defeat anyone. How can any of you defeat me? When I've already won. Let's go! This is the present now. Let's see. <laughs> It's almost as bad as your dinner jacket, but at least the world can be saved. By you? By all of us. Hey, get the wax out of your ears. I'm here to watch. But I'm not. What are you going to do? Count how much he weighs? You're half right, Dinah. She needed the help. Whoa. A powerful voodoo queen. <laughs> but that ain't you. Ooh. Marie Laveau. Papa Legba saved her. Nan. You want? Papa Legba told me to tell you, you are a pain in his ass. To release me from hell, Cordelia promised Papa Legba, the darkest and most corrupt voodoo queen's soul for mine. Whoa. Michael has to do something here, man. Yeah, there we go. Sweet. Holy shit. Come on, Michael. He's got to do something here, man. He knows the real one got burned alive by the witches, and now Cordelia's literally just killed the one he remade. He has to be full of anger and rage now. Sorry about your little toy, bitch. 
went through shit. Is Michael actually dead? So they didn't even use like a power, like a witch's power, to knock him out. They just used a gun. They used Miss Mead's arm. I serve it on that plane. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I knew this wasn't the end, man. No way was he killed by a gun, bruv. Oh, shit. Oh my god, Madison's actually just f fucking died. Okay. Mallory's been stabbed. What a turn. What a twist this is. I mean, she is going to have to go back in time and stop, like, Tate raping Vivian. You really think your stupid voodoo spells can stop me? Is that all you've got? Die again, fuckface! Nope, a knife isn't going to stop him either. Normally that would work. But I'm nothing like normal. Oh my god. Uh, I've got a feeling Mallory's going to fucking save everyone, man. I've got a feeling Madison's going to get saved. Queenie. Zoe. All of this killing that Michael's doing is for nothing. John. Come on, Mallory, please. She's gonna be please. fine. It appears as though we're fucked, my dear. <laughs> Myrtle is the one to admit it. But my sisters are legion motherfucker. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's sick, man. That's cool. It's gonna make Mallory stronger. Man, Cordelia sacrificed herself for everyone else. Let's go back to Murder House. La What's Mallory gonna do? She has to know a spell to like... I don't know, banish his soul? Oh. I'm guessing that was Mallory? Yeah. Same death as... Adelaide. So bullets didn't stop him when he was like fully developed, but I guess he was in the early stages here, so I guess a car could kill him? This is Myrtle Snow. Without the threat of Armageddon, Cordelia had no reason to bring back her beloved advisor. Yeah, that's true. That's cool, man. So Mallory literally knows everything. <laughs> there, there she is. And I found a really cute hotel. No, don't go to it. It's like old, but it's just been renovated and it's no. in town. No. It's kind of... I know where Madison is. We'll have to go to hell and bring her back. Oh, oh yeah. But she can sweat it out a little longer. <laughs> Stay there for a bit more. Nan? Nan. It's Nan. Hi, bitches. Nan? Because I killed the spawn of Satan, I got blazing street cred with the demons of the underworld. I have to go. Wait, wait, Nan. Where are you going? Back to Papa? I like it down there. How about the rest of your play? I, I don't <laughs> understand. Yeah, I suppose you. Say thank you. Oh, Nan knows. Nan knows about Mallory. Hi, um, would you be willing to sign a petition for talking to you? Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, there was no apocalypse, so they met anyway. They met regardless. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, those two were picked, right? 
for the DNA. So maybe their kid is pretty um pretty decent. They were picked to repopulate the world. So who's the kid? Is it another Michael? God, don't tell me it's another Michael. Yeah, go on. Red Sky. Who's the kid? There's no way it's an evil kid. How could it be? That's weird. They've done the same at Murder House. Right from Freak Show. Lives for this. We're here to help. What? Uh, 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 uh. Right, okay, that was the finale of Apocalypse. That was a lot better than I anticipated. A lot better than I thought it would have been. That was a great finale, man. I'm not going to lie. Um, it all made sense to me. We'll get to the ending, though. Don't worry about that. We'll definitely get to the ending. But it started off well. Um, Myrtle Snow managed to get to Mutt. Or the two, the two Chuckle Brothers, I like to call him. She managed to get Coco and Mallory on the flight to Outpost 3. Cool, that made sense to me. Then there was the identity spell that Cordelia put on Coco and Mallory. Um, just so Michael couldn't know that they were both witches when they were at, at the outpost. Which was clever. But to me, Michael, he's the son of the devil. He's meant to be the Antichrist. He's supposed to be like the most powerful so it was believable for me to like a certain extent but he's meant to be the most powerful right he can overlook any spells that's how i feel like i know the supreme has always been a female um witch it's never been a warlock and when michael was on the up they thought oh this is the, the first ever male supreme kind of thing and that's what that aerial guy was so buzzing about because he was like, yes, finally, a man can be in charge of the coven. But they were wrong. It wasn't. He wasn't a warlock, was he? He was the devil. So, And he'd done everything that Cordelia couldn't do. He managed to get Queenie out of the hotel. He managed to get Madison. He managed to get Misty Day out of their hell. So that, to me, just shows that he's so powerful. He doesn't, he doesn't even have a second attempt at it. He just does it first try. Whereas Cordelia trying to save Queenie, that took multiple attempts and she could not do it. But Michael strolled in, done it straight away. So the fact that he couldn't look past the identity spell on Mallory and Coco was a little questionable. Like, I don't have that much of a problem with it, but it's a little bit questionable to me. And there was a... Cordelia made a deal with Papa Legba to swap... Marie Laveau and Dinah Stevens. That was kind of done under the radar. I didn't really expect to see Marie Laveau again. But Marie Laveau, she was she was torturing Kathy Bates. But it wasn't Marie Laveau's hell, it was Kathy Bates's hell. So why is Marie Laveau why is she torturing Kathy Bates? Like it's meant to be their own versions of hell. Like why is she in Kathy Bates's hell torturing her? But anyway, the deal was made under everyone's nose. It was cool to see Marie Laveau again. Uh, and then she killed Dinah Stevens. Coming to think about it, actually, there wasn't actually that much point in having Dinah Stevens there. She didn't really do anything. Yeah, Dinah, Div Dinah Stevens didn't really... She didn't do anything, man. Like, when, once she was resurrected, all she was doing... She said to Cordelia... I'll always go for the winner. So she was obviously about to take Michael's hand and join him. But then Marie Laveau appeared. But I guess the point in her being there was because Michael knew her. Because 
she was the one that gained access for him into the Robisher Academy to kill the coven. So maybe Michael would have wanted her there. Okay, that makes a bit more sense. Michael would have wanted her there because she was she was going to be on his side regardless. Like, I think she Dinah Stevens was always going to get picked to go to the cooperative as well. I reckon. I was a little bit disappointed as well. I don't know if you noticed, but when Madison picked up the arm of Mead and just shot um, Michael, and then he just kind of collapsed into the corner, I was like, I was like, don't tell me he's dead just from that. Like there was no spells or anything used. And he's dead like that. But then as we know it, Michael kind of came back to life. His blood started getting soaked up into his body. So he was kind of being resurrected almost. And he he exploded Madison's head like instantaneously. She obviously went back to her hell. And then Mallory got stabbed by the boyfriend of Coco. Myrtle Snow killed him by burning him alive. That was cool. And then Cordelia, man, she sacrificed herself. I did. I think I did say that, actually. I did mention that. I was like, I said, uh, what if Cordelia gets injured or something and she's on the brink of death, but at the same time, almost like simultaneously, Mallory gets stronger as Cordelia gets weaker. And that's exactly what happened. As soon as Cordelia plunged that knife into her heart, Mallory was on the up, like rapid as well. Like she was on, she was on, she was almost on a rocket. Like she was just going off, man. She was on lift off from that moment. Um, and then she done the time, uh, the time machine stuff. I don't know. The can. It's a long word, man. Anyway, she done the time spell. And she ran Michael over in the road, the exact same way Adelaide died in Murder House. But Constance this time was a little bit more held back with her emotions with Michael because she wanted him gone. She definitely didn't display the same emotions as she did with uh, with Adelaide when she got run over. But he was a pain in the ass. He kept he kept killing babysitters and stuff. And yeah, so Mallory ran him over, and I'm guessing I did say it during the episode when it happened. I'm guessing because he wasn't. 100% yet like he was still growing into the person he was going to be that's why the car kind of killed him I would have thought he had, would have had some kind of power to protect himself from death because he is the devil technically the son of the devil but Mallory ran him over three times and yeah that was the end of it so he died and he died outside the house so he's gone he should be gone and then from that moment, so Mallory, yeah, so when she went into the tub to do the spell, and then she ran over Michael, like, she didn't teleport back to the academy, the outpost three, she must have just lived her life from that moment, knowing everything, well, not really knowing everything, because she had the, she had the spell put on her about the identity, so she was still kind of come into terms with what's happening because she because Cordelia said they forget everything and they set them up with their own personality so she would have been resurrected for the first time she'd be like what the hell I don't know resurrection was a thing and then she's being told she's a witch and now she's being told she's the last hope Mallory must have been like what the fuck and then she went back in time to stop Michael and when she killed him she just lived I guess she just lived her life from that moment and that's when she joined Robisha Academy. And then she saw Cordelia alive and well. She saw Zoe, Queenie. I kind of knew it would be that kind of ending. I had a feeling that all of the Coven would survive. I think I think it's because like it's the Coven. Like we've already had a season of the Coven in season three. And I was expecting none of them to react to, to, to die. Because I think a lot of fans would be pissed off knowing that their favourite character from Coven is now dead in a later season. Like I don't think that would have sat well with anyone. And Michael was like a brand new character, kind of. He was in Murder House at the very end. But no one, no one thought he would have grown up to do this in season 8 with the Coven. But I guess the only death 
was Myrtle Snow, but we saw her die in Coven because she didn't get resurrected at the end of season eight because Cordelia had no need to. The, the Michael wasn't wasn't coming to kill everyone to take over the whole world to bring an apocalypse. So that's why Myrtle Snow is still dead. And Nan, Nan must have known everything as well. Because she looked at Mallory and said something to Cordelia to like indicate that she knows as well. So it's not just Mallory that has this information, it's Nan and Papa Legba as well, it seems. But yeah, that was a good ending, man. I really enjoyed that ending. Uh, I still feel the same about the previous five episodes, though, like just constant flashbacks. Right, but we have to talk about the ending. So. I have to get my head around this one. So the people who wrote the names of the Outpost 3, those were the two Chuckle Brothers at the robotics lab. Because they had a screen of all the names listed, who, were, who was going to which Outpost and what. But in episode 1, we had people in suits come to Timothy's house and take him away. And that's when he met Emily. Now these two were specifically picked from just their DNA alone. So these two had the perfect DNA to mix. Now in episode one you're thinking. Okay. The best DNA to have are in these two. And they're obviously going to repopulate with their DNA. And they're going to create like a nice world or something with the perfect DNA. But it turns out it's not. So did Michael have a say in who goes to what outpost? If so, did he pick Timothy and Emily? Because it seems like they've given birth to another Antichrist, man. I don't want to know that. I don't think they should have included that at all. It should have just been one of those happy endings with the coven and stuff. I don't know why it showed us that with Timothy and Emily. Like that was weird. Because now I'm th now I'm thinking the whole idea where Tate had all the evil in the house in him, and then all the evil from the house passed into Michael. That just kind of goes out the window now for me, because we've just seen another kid killing babysitters and he wasn't like timothy didn't grow up in any haunted houses neither did emily these were just two perfectly compatible people like with their dna to repopulate the earth but it's kind of taken a turn for the worse and i don't get why unless it's because they were both picked by michael so michael can have a brother maybe maybe michael knew that the spawn of those two would be someone like him and he wants more of him. I, I don't know. That's kind of. That's my guess. And how did the. How did the Satanist cult at the end with Mead. Um, the guy in the middle. And then Pepper from Freak Show. Thank you to my patrons for letting me know that. The third member of that cult is Pepper. But how did they know? Is it because of the birds around the house? So even like. So, at the ending of this ep this episode, it just completely kicks Murder House in the balls. Because Murder House, it doesn't even matter about the evil in the house and that. Because at the end of this episode, the cult turn up to this house anyway. Saying, oh, we've been waiting for this moment. So is Timothy and Emily, are they both evil then? Or are they, do they have evil ancestors? What What made the kid evil? Are they just two complete polar opposites that they made this devil? But if they were polar opposites, they wouldn't have gotten along in the first place when they bumped into each other with the coffee. Dunno, man. Dunno. I'll buy it, though. I'll buy it. Just because it's the finale. And it's like, ooh, a twist. A, a very late twist at the end. But I don't really care that much. But yeah, that is it. That's Apocalypse done. Final thoughts on Apocalypse. Didn't really need the five flashback episodes. I think the Murder House one was enough. And then a bit of information here and there about the Coven and what they did in the build-up. But there should have been a bit more of the present, I feel. 
as soon as the presents started kicking in this episode, that's when I started to be like, yes, let's go. Like, I've just been so deprived from it, you know. I wanted it. I needed my, I needed my fix for the present time. But all in all, out of 10, Apocalypse, what am I going to give it? Out of 10. I'm, I'm thinking a 7. 7 out of 10 for Apocalypse. The first few episodes were great. The last episode was great. The in-between, not so much. The flashback Murder House episode, that was fantastic. Seeing Jessica Lang again in that role. I know people said that Freak Show was her last show, but technically this one is because she came back into character again. And it was great to see her, man, especially with all the old roles like Myrtle, um, Francis Conroy as Moira. She got a very nice ending in that episode earlier this season. Yo, what's going on? Future Chasman here. Literally the most present Chasman from Apocalypse. Uh, it's the 18th of March 2022. Um, I just want to nip it in the bud about my thoughts. Uh, I'm interrupting a little segment about Moira from Murder House having a nice ending. Uh, she did have a nice ending in the end of that episode flashback from Murder House. But because of Mallory going back in time and stopping Michael, it means that Moira, unfortunately, is still stuck at Murder House, probably being teased and bullied by Constance. Constance, we don't know if she still killed herself because she got rid of Michael anyway from Mallory. So Constance is probably still alive and living next door, but she's still coming over to Murder House probably to humiliate Moira. Um, and it's not just Moira that was affected by Mallory's time travel. Obviously at the end of Return to Murder House we had Zoe and uh, Tate kind of reunite in like a loving kind of way. That didn't happen either. I think Ben Harmon and Vivian weren't talking to each other either, but at the end of the episode they were. So, yeah, I just wanted to nip that in the bud that it's all well and good, the coven being saved, but Murder House wasn't, and I want to leave you with that. So, yeah, I'll get back to the video. And it was nice to see, man. So I think seven is a fair number. Just too many flashbacks for me. I kind of lost interest. Too many introductions of new characters as well like towards the end of the series which made me lose interest as well but it was good now i can kind of i can watch apocalypse again in my own time and be like oh yeah because now i know what happens i can be like way like mallory's already a witch and she's under a spell like identity spell and so is coco way coco coco's personality has been copied by Madison Montgomery and now I can pick up on it because now I know that that Cordelia admitted that uh. but yeah I might stop it there guys um, great series man not gonna lie as I said 7 out of 10 I've loved every single American Horror Story season so far I think American Horror Story is great it's so different and I love how they use the same actors in each season it helps you remember the names and the faces and stuff and it, make, it makes the story make a lot more sense because when i recognize someone from a previous season i can then just like i can call them by their their real name and then i get to know their actual name in the show and it's it's just a lot easier if it was random actors every season i would be very lost but I am going to stop it there, guys. So thank you for watching this finale reaction to American Horror Story Apocalypse. If you enjoyed this reaction to this episode, you can watch the full reaction over on my Patreon. You can also watch the full reactions to the previous nine episodes. So basically, you can watch the whole of Apocalypse on my Patreon in full. You can also watch the full reactions to Murder House, Asylum, Coven, Freak Show, Hotel, Roanoke, and Cult. They're all on my Patreon as well. So seasons one to eight, all on my all on my Patreon, every episode. So my whole American Horror Story journey has been documented uh, on video. So every reaction to every moment of American Horror Story so far has been captured. Like I think that's quite cool. 
and every finale has been captured in my shirt and tie that's i think that's also quite cool as well um but if you're watching this episode on youtube episode 10 finale um there'll be some writing up here to let you guys know what is available on my patreon if 1984 is on my patreon it will definitely say up here if not i'm sure there'll be something else that says it up here i don't know i don't know what yet it is yet future chasman can figure that one out but yeah finally thank you guys for watching again and i'll hopefully see you for episode one of 1984 take it easy <laughs>